Hey guys, Red Bandit here with Red Bandit Modeling, coming at you with another video. In this video, we'll be taking a look at my build of the Ravel 148 scale B25 Mitchell. Let's get on with the build. I started the build off by removing all the sub-assemblies and starting to build a lot of the smaller sub-assemblies for the kit. I then started preparing it for painting. Throughout this whole model, I'll use a combination of middle, Mission Models paint, Tester's paint, and to me a paint. My painting process started off with me doing a black base with Tamiya black, flat black paint. I then mo moved on to using US Interior Green from Mission Models Paint MMP059 mixed in with some of their polyurethane additive MMA001 mix additive. I then, then went and painted all the smaller sub-assemblies on top of that with Tamiya paint and Tester's paint. This is the flight deck assembly. For the instrument panel, I just dry brushed over the raised detail with Tamiya white paint, and then highlighted all the switches with a toothpick. The kit comes with a flight crew member who's in a seated position with a clipboard as if he's going through various things being loaded up into the airplane. So I decided to include him. After painting some molded in detail, it was time to start putting in all the sub-assemblies. This, this sub-assembly here is the Bombay section in the crew compartment crawl space. Once all the sub-assemblies were together, it was time to put the fuselage halves and the wings together. I will warn that the nose gear is a very tricky part, part to put in, given the limited space that it has. Moving on to the attachment of the nose part to the main fuselage. As you can see, where, where the main fuselage butts up to the no, no, bombardier section slash gun bay, there's a slight warp where, it, where the joint is. You can also see where the canopy attached sprue point kind of fogged up the canopy itself. Before we move on into painting, here's a video I took from Oshkosh of the Sandbar Mitchell restoration team demonstrating the tail gun. That's very advanced when you realize this is the whole yeah. <laughs> So the turret it. itself basically works by hydraulic pressure. So you have two sets of veins like this. And basically all it is is high pressure comes in one side to push the vein to either left or up or down. And then pressure will come back in the other side to push it back. So what we had to do with this turret is we basically had to take our veins that looked like this. We had to go through and actually uh, do a process called uh, spray metalizing, which actually added metal back to the original cast of pieces. And then we went through, remachined them, resurfaced them. The actual veins themselves, we had to go through and recreate the vein seals. A company out of New Hudson, Michigan called Exotic Seals actually did that for us, including making all the other seals, the, the main uh, seals between the casings and the actual shaft seals. But uh, the turret's about 2,000 PSI system once it maxes out. It is all self-contained in this actual turret controller. So the controller itself just runs off the 24 volt system in the aircraft. It's a half horsepower motor that drives a secondary pump, which then ultimately pumps fuel up into the two main pumps, which is also driven by the same motor. Now for some reason, if you lose hydraulic pressure, or if there's a, a electrical shortage in the airplane, there is normally two valves here, which we just don't have installed because of the way we have this rigged up, that would basically shut off the actual uh, pressure to the system. And at that point in time, you'd come back here. So this whole unit you see here would be facing 
in here back and the, uh, the tail gunner would be sitting back here and the back side of that armor plate would basically be right here at the back of this gun sight. So what he would do is there'd be two little doors on that he would open up, he'd come in here, he'd pull this lever, this piece would pop up like that. There's a second handle that we did not get finished yet for Oshkosh, but then what basically what it do is you spin this handle and it unlocks and comes out. And now that is your now controller to man the turret. And then this trigger is your gun trigger, which then basically goes ahead and pushes these two plungers to a manual trigger in the gun. And then basically storage, you turn that ball back, pull the pin out, down, turn it the lock. So there's only about a handful of these that actually still operate in the B-25. The one thing about our turret that we're very proud of is so our aircraft never saw combat. It was always here in the States as a bomber trainer. But it served as a fire bomber up in Alaska, and that's where it crashed June 27th of 69. But when it flew as a fire bomber, it flew with 8Z on the tail. And we wanted to leave the 8Z on the tail to honor its heritage as a fire bomber, but bring it back to a wartime Mitchell. So that's when we learned about the 340th Bomb Group 488 Squadron. That squadron flew the following leather 8 followed by 8 through Z. So there was actually three 8Z airplanes. The very first 8Z was an early B-25 that got buried when Mount Vesuvius erupted over there. The second one was lost over the Brenner Pass and the third was scrapped after the war. So we were going to build our aircraft to resemble the 8Z that was shot down. So she was part of a three ship formation that was dropping white phosphorus on the German implementations down in the Brenner Pass so that the bombers could come back through and bomb the Campo North Railroad Bridge. Well, 8Z took a direct hit of flak, and the, the B-25 can maintain on one engine, but it can't climb, so they couldn't get out of the pass. So basically, the pilots bailed out of the aircraft, the crew did, the plane continued on to crash into a mountainside, the crew was sadly captured, and because three of them had over 41 missions, they were moving them from one prisoner camp to the next, the German stopped, said, you guys could get out and stretch, and as soon as they did, they executed them. Oh, so uh, when the plane did crash in the mountain, there was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Pyle and his father, um, who actually saw this happen in 45. The wreckage, a lot of it tumbled down the mountainside, and Mr. Pyle and his dad went there and recovered most large chunks of the airplane, brought it back to their farm, and then just would use parts of it when they need to be. That tail turret controller you see there is the original tail turret controller out of the AZ that was lost in the world. So it's very awesome to have parts like that that we can actually go ahead and restore and put into the recreation of that airplane to honor this crew. So with the original crash reports, we know the serial numbers of every single machine gun that was on that airplane. All of our replica guns that are being made for us actually have the serial numbers that match what was on 8Z on them, and they'll be in the correct positions for the crew. Is there any questions I can answer for you guys? Now let's return to the build. At this point, I was starting to think about paint jobs, and unfortunately, I had not gone to Oshkosh to get the decals for the Sandbar Mitchell, and I wanted to represent a P7, or a P25 correction that would come to town every once in a while called Show Me. Unfortunately, I was unable to find the decals, or any decals for that one, and I don't currently possess the ability to make my own so I went with the inbox options here's some footage of show me the one I wanted to build it's like the, yeah and also then batteries come on yeah, it's, okay clear it's, it's like 270 degrees of gravy like yeah. it goes behind you and then like it comes you up and then bam yeah. So yeah, really feels at 75% Especially if you're light gun. If you're a light gun, you're at 50, I think. I'm just turning on the battery.
for stab wounds for priority. Stab wounds don't multiply things for priority. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
onto the paint job. I painted the, the canopy frames with the same color as the entire of the interior, interior of the aircraft. I then covered everything else in a black coat of, to me, a black, flat black, and then sprayed the mission models MMP-091 Olive Drab 41 U.S. Air Force. Once I was finished with the olive drab color, I then did the underside in MMP-095 U.S. Camouflage Gray. It went down quite nicely, and I liked the soft transition line between the gray and the green. Next, I then used Tamiya white paint for the wingtips and yellow for the engine cowlings. Once the paint had dried and everything, all the masking tape was off, I then put down the decals. I used Microset and Microsol on the decals, which the decals really took to basically every little surface really well. I then went on and did some weathering of where, with paint chipping and some exhaust stains using some dry pigments and thinning down some Tamiya black paint. This is one of the few modifications to the kit I made. There was a sm small antenna wire running from the cockpit to the front of the ge gear well that is not present on the kit, so I had to make it myself. I then used some common household thread as the antenna itself. And with that, the B-25 is finished. Now on to the base. These are the wheel chocks from the Airfix Ready for Battle set. If you notice, I put red stars on here for a weird reason. Uh, the red stars are to represent our Warbird hangar, which is here at Bowman Field. Then they fly a bunch of yaks, and a lot of the, and all their chocks have red stars on the cho wheel chocks. These are all the parts that are going to make up the diorama base. They consist of figures from the kit itself or the B-17 kit and some other ons and ends from the Airfix Ready for Battle set and some scratch-made things such as the ladder and the tarp. The base was really simple and straightforward to make. I took two, two pieces of cardboard from the back of the kit box and put them on the flat surface of an old wine box and then painted them in a light gray and did some oil stains where the engines were parked overnight. And with that, the build was complete. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and as always, model on.